Okay, this is our first rocket in our series uh, on the larger class of rocket engines that have a bigger diameter, and they're called the D and E series rockets. And uh, this is something called the Little Joe 2, which is a rocket that NASA flew uh, in the, er yeah, the early and mid-60s. And the whole purpose of this was to test this little system up here on top uh, to see how well um, the safety recovery system would work for astronauts who would be in this part if anything happened. And there's some really cool videos online where you can actually see the tests of the real rocket and how it all worked. And if you get here and look underneath here, you can see that there's little rocket engines underneath this little mini rocket at the top of a tower. And what would happen if anything went wrong is this little rocket here would blast off, carry away the capsule away from the dangerous part down here, and then it would blast off itself, separate, and then the capsule would come down on uh, its own. So, and it actually had to happen once because they had a problem on launch. Now the uh, Little Joe 2 was one I made early on in my uh, rocket making um, uh, career here, and I made some mistakes. I was still using acrylic paint, and the acrylic paint didn't work really well, and you can see how I had some taping issues. Oh, this all should have been a sticker too, which I broke the sticker, and like I said, I'm not good with uh, really big stickers. These little light uh, things that you see look like light posts that are on the top are actually little mini jet engines that would help it uh, in course correction. Um, each one of those had to be, has five pieces that had to be put together and glued up. So this is a advanced uh, rocket. Also the whole um, structure of this little, I don't know what you want to call it, but this whole thing uh, all had to be done two piece by piece and it was not the easiest thing in the world to do. So, um, but the nice thing about this is the fins are plastic and easy to just pop on. So, uh, also if we look down here, it's got some nice detail on the bottom, uh, with these little rockets. And I have seen versions of this online where some jokers have placed an engine in each of those, uh, six plus the one in the center and launched it up and boy, it goes out of, out of sight. So the little Joe two, um, it has a big, you know, we're talking a three and a half inch, fuselage and so the recovery system works really really well I usually actually have to kind of keep a piece of tape on the top to keep this from just falling off uh, but I've flown it once and it performed great so little Joe 2 I like it okay this is the Estes Odyssey which is one of my uh, very favorites um, it was a very difficult build not the easiest thing in the world to do. Um, definitely have to have eye-hand coordination because there's a lot of cutting out of tubes uh, to shape everything and get it all fitting together right. Um, that center engine part there, each of those little blades is an individual thing. These are all different tubes that have to be cut down to different shapes. Uh, this is all detail work like crazy, getting that all on there, um, as well as these little uh, nacelles on the end or maybe laser guns, I'm not sure what they are, but they're really cool. Each one of those is an individual piece that has to be put together. Uh, the stickers are definitely a lot of work. This is all little pieces that are glued on, little um, cardstock pieces. And I still need to paint my, my window blue, but uh, all in all, I've flown this once. It goes way the heck up there, um, but it performed really well and came right down. So. Uh, I'm really happy with it. I didn't show the engine size before, but you can really see how this has a substantially larger uh, diameter engine bore, and as a result, we call this the uh, D and E series engines uh, because they are just so much more powerful. So this goes up quite a ways, but it also has a lot of drag uh, because of all this stuff at the back, which kind of keeps it at a little bit lower altitude than you would suspect. So the Estes Odyssey. And there's some older Odysseys you'll see online. They're a different kind of rocket than this, but this is the current model in 2020 of the Odyssey. Okay, this is the Estes Space Shuttle. This is one of the cooler ones by far. Uh, definitely um, not the easiest build in the world, but uh, if you have good eye-hand coordination, um, I recommend it. Because if you can get it all done, it's really, really neat. Um, and how this works is we have the shuttle, we also have the main booster, which is an orange, plus two side boosters 
and then four little sub boosters. Now, this, none of the boosters really work, okay? What we're doing here is we're kind of faking it. And you can see that the space shuttle is hung on by a little hook right there. And down the bottom, it's got two little pegs that it sits on, okay? And what's gonna happen is this is gonna launch. It's gonna go, well, it's not gonna go straight on up. It doesn't really fly completely straight. It kind of arcs over. And that's just what the real space shuttle does too. But once it arcs over and starts heading towards the ground and kind of over the top of its uh, apogee, then um, the uh, parachute uh, blast happens. The cone easily comes off, blasts it out, but that jolt releases the space shuttle. And the space shuttle then comes off and floats to the ground by itself. Now, we've flown this twice, actually. First time, it kind of went really pretty much straight down into the ground. Oh, I shouldn't say it, it flew but it didn't fly very nice and it hit the ground pretty fast. The second time I added uh, some clay, you can see some clay in there, into the back to kind of bring it up a little bit. And that made for a substantially better flight. I didn't film that one, unfortunately, uh, but it still needed a little less back here so that I didn't scoop some out uh, when I put in. And I believe that um, in flight number three, it should behave a little bit more like we want. Now, this plane is 100% balsa, except for this top piece and this top piece, which are cardstock. There's a lot of workings inside of here that are complicated. Um, this whole nose piece is made up of seven different pieces that are almost like a square. And you've got to go through and sand it all down, cut it down. I basically carved it with an X-Acto knife and then finished it off with a sander. You can see how it's done like that, but that helps it survive impact when it crashes or hits the ground, it depends on <laughs> lands or crashes, it depends on how you want to look at it. Uh, but it definitely takes some skill. So this is a higher level, more complicated one for a reason. And uh, you can see the two little pegs that it's on there. And I had to kind of whittle on them to make sure that they were loose enough and this whole thing worked. But it's one of the cooler ones. Check out our video online uh, of this flying. And this is the SD Space Shuttle. It costs about $50. It's one of the most expensive ones out there but um, it's worth uh, every penny, I think. So that's cool. Okay, this is the Estes Conquest. This is one of the better flying uh, rockets out there and it was a fun build. You know, I think that it's one that a more, somebody who can do a little bit of boss work might want to use this as one to graduate to the next level on. Um, this top little piece had to be carved. Uh, there's an angle uh, that you have to sand and get achieved on the wings. You can see that little thing going on there. There's also this little air intake system on the bottom, which is not hollow, which uh, on some different forms I was looking on online, people were saying, should I cut through those and make it so the air can pass through? And everybody's saying, no, no, no. The designers know what they're doing. They uh, made those there for wind resistance. Um, I flown this once, it flew great. Went up, I think I had a, uh, C11 III on it, which is the smaller of the large format engines, the DNE series. They do make a C that goes in this. And, uh, but I think we're going to try a D12 V on it and see how that performs. So, um, got a big nose, has a cool kind of shark kind of feel to it here with the stickers. I like that. It's fun. Um, you also have these little rockets down here on the bottom. Uh, that were all individually made with balsa fins and things like that and all mounted. So pretty neat. Um, got a good video of one of the club members catching it when it comes down and it also uh, tangled up on its chute on this first flight too so I really can't wait to see it do just what it's supposed to do when the chute doesn't tangle. But anyway the Estes Conquest it's a cool one. This is the Estes Explorer I'm sorry, Aquarius Explorer. And this is a master level one um, for the main reason that each of these tubes has to be individually made, glued, assembled. And I mean, it's it's definitely an eye hand coordination fair. Uh, I went through and painted everything first and then glued it together. Its base is actually, the base I have it on here, if I get it off readily, um, is actually, maybe I can't, the jig that comes with it that you have to assemble separately too. Oh, come on, get out of there. 
uh, to put everything together. This apparently is a newer option in 2020 because everybody I look at online is putting all these tubes on by hand and I don't know how you would get them on there with any uniformity. You can see they're on there really nice uh, because I have the jig. This um, tail cone is just for decoration, for display. It comes off and it has uh, the larger bore, uh, the larger bore uh, motor um, that holds the uh, DE series. I've flown this twice, and both times I've had parachute problems. And so <clears throat> I really want to try it again and get a successful launch out of it where the parachute successfully deploys. So um, the Aquarius Explorer flies really nice. It's landed twice uh, without destroying itself. So that goes a long way for how well it's uh, manufactured. And I must have done a good build on it. So let's see if we can, as a group, get this thing to fly right, okay? The Explorer Aquarius. Okay, this is the enormous Astron Explorer. And uh, it stands about four feet tall. I've flown this about three or four times. Uh, lost it once at uh, our lost site, our launch site, because we put, uh, I believe we put an E series in there. No, I probably put a D125 and it went up really, really high. So this one's going to probably have to require a smaller engine to work in our launch site because it's just so efficient. It goes up so darn high. Um, and so let's lay it over on its side and take a closer look at it. The Astron Explorer. Okay, the Astron Explorer. Now, this rocket took me a little while to figure out how in the world it worked. Um, because as we look at it here, we have the main body tube. Let me kind of put it like this so you can see a little bit more of what's going on there. The main body tube that goes up to a point. There's a cone here, and this cone terminates. It doesn't go anywhere. You glue it on, and it doesn't come off. And you can see how it's fitted into this little piece down here on the bottom, but that's just to hold it in place. Uh, it serves no function whatsoever, that connection. Now, we have these three tubes that are around it, okay? And then, those, so those connect down there, and then they connect over here, and then you have another tube that goes on up, and then you have your nose cone connecting right here. So, this piece is not connected to that piece, and I couldn't figure out how it was gonna work until I manufactured it or until I built it. And so what you don't see is connecting this piece and all three of these tubes to this main fuselage piece and this main fuselage piece are little slots, very similar to the slots on the mini heli uh, or the mini A heli that we have. They remind me of a coin slot for a quarter, like from a gum machine or a vending machine. And what you do when you build it is you line up the slots on your little tubes with the slots on the big tubes that you've cut. You gotta cut your slots exactly in the right spot. You gotta make sure they're lined up when you glue it all and you gotta make an airtight glue. But if you do all that, what happens is when uh, at the top of its uh, flight, after it burns its smoke uh, signal, which I'll tell you about later, um, its parachute uh, charge happens, or its recovery charge happens, we call it. And that recovery charge usually launches up towards the cone of the rocket to blast off the, the nose piece. So in this case, what happens is the pressure wave, and that's the pressure caused by this explosion, goes up here through those coin slot size holes through all three tubes, and then it ends, it dead ends, and has to go back out somehow, so it goes out the three coin slot tubes into this tube. And then from there on out and pops off the top. And oh my gosh, it works every time. I tried it when I built it, you know, I just kind of played it like a trombone. I just put the motor end up to my mouth and blew into it. And lo and behold, the top popped off. And so I was like, wow, it actually works. Um, my paint job is mediocre because this is probably the second or third one I made after I decided to start doing the club. And so it's acrylics. Um, and so I do things differently now. Uh, I'm better at stickers uh, now than I was at that time. You can see how I didn't put them on very well. And they kind of just tore off in the launches uh, due to the massive strains that are involved. Um, 
And I did lose a fin on one of those too. And I think I, you can see where I've had to relaunch or reattach a fin, but she's on there fine. And hopefully she'll come off. There's a video of us uh, launching this at our main launch area at the middle school. And it goes up and catches a wind and falls about a block away in the neighborhood. And we did eventually recover it, but it took us about a half hour of walking around uh, and social distance knocking on doors uh, with our masks and talking to people from sidewalks and asking if we can look in their backyard and eventually somebody helped us by finding it themselves so all is not lost for the astron explorer um if you watch the video it descends through clouds at certain points it goes up so high so anyhow the biggest rocket in our fleet the astron explorer it is a master level rocket so this is one that somebody's going to have to make with their parent. Or uh, if you were in high school, I think you might have the eye-hand coordination to do this. But it is a toughie. All right? So thanks.